Hi, my name is Dana Harris Seeger. Welcome to my studio at Visual Philosophy. Today I want to talk about paper. As a mixed media artist, I use paper a lot in my work and that can range from collage to painting papers, um, embedding it into encaustic paintings. So part of, um, part of my practice is collecting papers and creating them. So I wanted to share a little bit about um, some of the papers I've been using um, traditionally throughout my career and then also some new ones that I've been discovering, um, which are very exciting. So let's just start with some of the kind of traditional papers that I like to use and that can be anything from newspaper and or uh, phone book pages for texture. These are great because they're everywhere and readily available, very cheap, and they make really nice texture. They're thin, so they're easy to apply with um, matte medium or Elmer's glue painted on them. And along those lines, I also like to use handwriting as texture, um, saving old notebook pages, getting pages from my family's um, notebooks, or um, like for instance, I use my grandma's address book a lot because it has a historical meaning to me. It keeps her memory alive um, in the present. And it also, I think, triggers um, some emotions in other people and forms those connections. So that's why I like to use those types of ephemera a lot in my work. And rather than, I mean, some people might not want to use the actual pages. I don't mind because it does kind of connect me to her and to that past um, or to what, whoever I'm uh, referencing and using. And rather than keep it in a box in the attic, um, I figure it will serve a better purpose on a piece of artwork. And if you didn't want to do that, say you did like the look of it, you wanted the meaning, but you didn't want to use the actual page um, or paper, or maybe it was just too delicate, uh, making a scan or taking a, a photo and printing it out, making a copy, is a really good option. Then you can transfer it, which I've done before, um, or you can collage on the, the photocopy. And color copies are good enough. They look pretty much like the originals. Um, so those are always options too, which I've used before. Uh, I love using like grid papers or blank um, graph diagram type of papers. Uh, this one's a little shiny, and that's not really a problem when you're collaging. Um, you might want to use a different glue, for instance, like a spray mount rather than a water-based like Elmer's or matte medium glue, just to avoid any potential wrinkling. Um, but I haven't really had any problem with the shininess. Um, it will depend on what you want to place on top of it, though, if because it's not as absorbent um, some some materials won't stick, like colored pencil or some water-based materials. So just be aware of that. You wouldn't really want to paint watercolor over the top of this shiny photographic type of um, paper, uh, which leads me to another uh, type of collage paper that I like to use, um, postcards or photographs, since I have so many from my family, my Baltic heritage, postcards from Latvia and Estonia or that I've acquired over my life and travels. And it's just a nice, um, nice way to incorporate that personal touch. I don't mind cutting them up and using them um, for their design qualities. But think about mixing the photographic quality with more hand-drawn um, or, um, you know, graphic elements because they do contrast and whether you want that or not, that's going to depend on your final outcome. 
I like to use other types of like magazine pages or comic books, things that are kind of graphic um, and machine made as well. And one thing is a stencil, even the stencils after I've used them, they have a really nice texture. You'll see those showing up in my paintings. Uh, the nice thing about these is that they'll, they kind of reference a letter or a number or a symbol. And so that triggers something in, um, in your viewer's mind, makes connections. So having these sort of graphic elements, I think help that. And it's really fun, again, as a mixed media artist to use things that I've um, drawn or created next to those sort of machine made things. For instance, this reduction screen print of a uh, projector that I screen printed, you know, I hand painted it and then printed it onto this rice paper, which will probably get layered over another type of um, print or painting. This rice or mulberry paper is really nice. I think this is called Hosho. It's nice because it's durable. It's, it's tough, long um, kind of grain, but it's also a little bit transparent or translucent. So some of those under layers will show through. I have a big collection of translucent kind of papers and that's because I do like that layered look and I like kind of the ability to obscure parts of the image, but also to reveal um, some things. This one has some monotype, some encaustic monotype on it, which gives it even more translucency. Um, you know, play around with the different degrees that you can get. And oftentimes the way that they look dry isn't the way that they'll end up when you layer them. So because I'm adding um, a water-based glue, for instance, that water will soak into the paper. And when I layer it on top of my painting, it will become even more transparent. So experimenting with what they look like beforehand and then after adhering is gonna be key as well. And on the note of transparency, um, I another thing I like to use is tissue paper. So this is just a, like a standard kind of gift wrap tissue paper. Uh, it is very thin and unlike the mulberry or the rice papers, uh, it will tear pretty easily. And when you're using it with water-based glues, I tend to water those down so that it doesn't get too sticky and pull the paper away or stick and pull the paper away or stick to my hands. Another type of tissue paper is um, pattern paper. I'm a sewer, so I have a big collection of these. Um, some of them I have used, cut up and actually used, but some of you can find them at like an old bookstore or garage sale. Uh, people who don't want them anymore, you know, even if you're not a sewer, the, the graphic quality and the, the thin translucency are really nice for embedding into um, encaustic paintings or laying over photographs um, or other um, media. So I, I tend to organize my papers according to their, uh, like the look rather than the color. So that I have a whole bunch of transparent, um, an organization of transparent, I have a section of transparent papers the rice papers, the tissues. I have um, more photographic type of papers organized together. And then I have my kind of hand, hand painted um, papers, for instance, using old prints that I might not like the way that they were looking as prints, but I'll cut them up and collage them onto another piece. And I, what I like about that is the contrast between um, that texture of the like the monotype or the painting um, next to something more graphic, it really pops. So, you know, even if you're not intending to use them as a print, just go ahead and paint some paper, you know, go crazy. You don't have to worry about how it's going to end up looking as a whole because you're just going to cut it up. So you can have a lot of fun doing that 
And I just recently did that with watercolor, which turned out really cool. Um, let's see. Um, painting papers also, you know, they can be solid papers if you have a particular color way that you are drawn to and you're not finding that, um, you know, ready-made paper is coming in that uh, color or if there's a different quality of paper that you want, but, a, but you know, not the right color, then just go ahead and take a piece of cardstock, get some acrylic paint and paint your own. Um, they won't probably end up quite as solid as a store-bought paper that's been machine made, but you know, that could be part of the, part of the charm and quality. And then the, one of the uh, newest discoveries that I've uh, been using recently, excuse me, uh, is this Duralar. It is a drafting vellum. So it's semi-transparent, it's like a frosted color, and I could print on it with a water-based media, like um, water-based ink, screen printing ink, or pen and ink, or things that would normally smear or just rub off of traditional vellum. And I love it because I can overlay it onto other um, imagery and kind of just barely see that frosting come through. So I can layer it up a lot. I can put multiple Duralar prints on top of uh, one another. The one thing I will say about using this is that I don't recommend using a, like a water-based glue with it because it will warp and sort of wrinkle. Um, so what I usually do to adhere the Duralar to my print or whatever substrate I'm using is a spray glue, spray mount. Um, so permanent, like Super 77 spray glue. It retains the integrity of the paper and it will give you the best um, adherence onto that. Maps, of course, always a favorite. Um, I don't know, there's something about the, the colors, the, the quality of the grid, and just the, the reference. Um, here's Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania, the Baltic countries. I probably saved this for something and haven't used it yet, but um, maps are always a favorite um, to use as collage for me. And, you know, here's another grid paper. So the list goes on. It's really, it's really kind of endless. And the problem is, you know, saving them and um, getting rid of the ones that you, uh, that you have to because you can't save it all. But just start to see your paper that you come in contact with in a new way and save something maybe that you wouldn't normally save to incorporate into your mixed media uh, later and you know be experimental sit down and make a bunch of of collage papers paint some paint some papers and have fun so i hope that inspired you a little bit with your mixed media work <laughs>